Did you know that I'm actually reusing drawings and assets in these shots? Or the secret to this shot is that I only animated one character. Instead of redrawing each frame, I just rotated and skewed some drawings to make it seem seamless. Or what about getting work that's meant to be done within weeks, I get done in just a few days. Spending less time and energy, and this is why working smart and knowing how to do it is highly beneficial. Hey guys, it's Hideo Kopantoa, and today I'd like to talk about working smarter and not harder when it comes to animation or art because there's a lot of labor steps to get something done. Now, what do I refer to when I'm talking about working smarter? The first one being working smarter and not harder. You know, getting close to the ideal animation or final picture without spending so much time on laborious efforts. This also includes methodology of finding shortcuts to your workflow to make things more automatic. Another thing that I'm referring to is smarter and adaptive. Adapting to tight schedules, adapting to your circumstance, taking initiative on improvisation if needed. Working smarter doesn't mean always finding easier and shortcut ways, but also making you think outside of the box when trying to get something done. There's a lot of topics and things I can talk about regarding to working smarter and not harder and dumber. In this video, I just want to talk about the ideal mindset you might want to have when you want to approach working smarter more and why each of them are so crucial. The first one is the experience of working hard and taking things slow. Yes, yes, I'm making a video about ways to work smarter, faster, easier, and not harder. However, we also have to understand and appreciate that sometimes good quality is achieved through hard and long laborious tasks. Another reason why I encourage the experience of working hard, laboriously, and more detailed is also to gain a sense of familiarity with the craft. If you do things the long way many times with all that repetition, you'll notice you become faster at certain things as well as you becoming more decisive. When you make a drawing, it's not with uncertainty. It's exactly what you imagined in your mind. What used to be five different steps to the process, maybe it'll just take you now three steps if you know exactly what to put into your work. Things like planning your work ahead of time and doing multiple passes makes you an effective thinker. That's the important thing. With a combination of repetition and actively thinking about your choices rather than just winging it also helps you give birth to some ideas and how to work smarter and less harder. The other important factor is experimentation and creativity. Sure, repetition and labor's tasks can make you more familiar and more punctual with the craft, but it's still a lot of work. And also, if you just focus on just working hard all the time, you build tunnel vision syndrome. And that can lead to you thinking that good quality work can only be done from working hard and laboriously. One thing that's hard for you know ambitious people who are tunnel vision to do is to try new things. You know, try learning 3D learning how to paint or do a new approach, experiment with new different software and see what advantages each software has to offer. Some software have AI integrated auto coloring, whereas some allow for rigs. Experiment by making silly things really quickly to see how you can whip out something quick and small in a short amount of time using some of these tools. Try making stupid projects instead of trying to think of every project has to be some sort of magnum opus. Even following a donut blender tutorial allowed me to understand the general functions of Blender. Whereas someone like Ian Hubert will show how he works really smart and really fast with Blender, at the same time coming up with exceptional images. Let's say you're animating a super detailed character in a traditional animation sense. Instead of redrawing every keyframe, you could just lasso select some parts of the drawing, warp that around, transform them around, move them around, so that you can spend less energy on creating new drawings all the time. And for this to work properly, you have to have a strong fundamental understanding of animation, spacing, solid drawing, for even those quick processes do need some good foundations. And that does come from experience, like experience from working super hard and laboriously. For my quick casual films like my 48 hour films, I would just utilize Flash's symbol functionality and library and just reuse assets that I drew. For example, this samurai in this clip where he's just talking each part, such as the head, parts of the helmet, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, 
They're all separate assets where I just moved it around to give it a more lively effect, and the mouth animation is like a loop of different frames. What about the silly aerobics animation that I did? All these three characters are the same, except their skin color is replaced as well as their heads. I understood Flash enough where I could just animate one character doing the motion and just replace a few things in bits and pieces, and give the illusion that I animated three different characters. And I think because of how awkward it looked, I liked how it added to the comedy. But you know what? Sometimes it doesn't have to look awkward. And if you're really smart in what to prioritize and how to utilize it, you can get away with so many things without the audience even realizing what's actually happening with the effect. But this also requires a strong understanding of what program you're using, the pipeline, the workflow, etc. Another factor that I'd like to talk about, planning. It's always good to strategize and plan things out before you execute the work. I would highly recommend beginning animators to plan more, whether it's thumbnailing, whether it's creating a color script first, or storyboarding. Because there's many occasions where beginning artists just wing it, they just go full throttle with it, they work super hard on it, and when the animation or the art comes out, it doesn't look quite right, they can't figure it out, so they keep redoing, trial and erroring it, still doesn't come off as right, and repeat and rinse and repeat. And by the end of the day, they're tired, they're burned out, and they got nothing done. So you want to have a proper foundation or the groundwork before you actually implement the work. So for example, for animation, that requires a lot of drawing. I would thumbnail all my acting poses first before even animating, just so I can get all those ideas out of my head. If the character's moving all over the scene, have one drawing where it's just a layout of different poses of the character in one single frame, and then use that as a roadmap for when you animate the character on top of it. If you're trying to utilize color at its strength, come up with a color script first, and then use that as a reference or your actual palette for your project, whether that's a short film or a series of illustrations or sequential art. If you're working on a short film, start to prioritize what shots are super important, what you need to spend the most time on, and what shots aren't so important and those can be filler and you can spend less energy on that. And speaking of priority, that's something that I'll talk about later down the line in the same video. Remember, working smarter isn't just about finding the easier and quick way to do things. It's also about thinking, utilizing your brain. Brain relates to smartness. Now let's talk about efficiency and reusability, and this is my favorite one that I like to talk about. When I work on projects that use a certain pipeline, I like to think of a workflow or a methodology that can be used by anyone else besides me. So I also think about if I'm working on a project, and if I needed help finishing that project, I could happily pass some of this work to other animators or artists, and they can get the work done smoothly. Another good professional advice that I received was, you know, make the job easier for everyone else in your team team or later down the line. So come up with ways to make the job more efficient and maybe automated. So these include tools, brushes, reusable packets, reusable assets that could not only speed up the process but can also be utilized by everyone and it's easy for them to understand. When the project requires me to storyboard in Photoshop, where I have to apply tone and lighting and gradients and all that, I made an action set that automates that laborious part and just consolidates it to a single push of a button. And that's why I can turn in fully toned and fully lit storyboards in a short amount of time. Sometimes I would animate an effect once, and if I needed to use that effect again, I would just grab that file and put it in my scene accordingly. This could also be reused in other shots or even other projects. It could even be used by different individuals. Like I could package this, put it on my Gumroad or my store and then just sell it off so people can just use it. Passive income ideas, by the way. Maybe find ways to just reuse drawings or reuse assets. Here's another example. When I did work for Tonko House's Pig, the Dam Keeper poems, we only had a few weeks to tie down the entirety of the season's animation. So I had to come up with a solution that would speed up the process. And you know, I reached out to TV Paint, I experimented, and I made a brush pack matching the head and the body angles for each of our main characters and the artists and the animators could just stamp them on top of the rough animation to make it match more to the proportions and to make them feel more on model. So yeah, efficiency, automation, reusability, and most importantly, think about if you had to pass down work to your fellow coworker, make their life easier. Next is priority. So what's important for your project? So working on short films under strict deadlines forced me to prioritize what was important for my projects and how much energy I would have to spend on other things. Priority is also understanding what parts need to be sacrificed in order to finish something. 
priority can be found in every step in each of the process. For storyboarding, since I know it won't be the final product, I'm very crude and very loose with my drawings. Drawings are meant to be rough and graphic, I'm not even going to tone them. And because I know I'm going to redo the storyboard phase a lot, I want to keep it in a way where it's more casual. When I rough animate, I don't in between every drawing. I do things like partials, which is an incomplete in between drawings, but this is just for cleanup reference. So when I'm or someone else is cleaning up the animation, this just tells them to treat the clean line as a normal in between. Between. instead of having to spend a lot of energy and time on just the rough animation, which won't be the final look of the animation. I chose to spend more time on storyboarding and animation for my films, but when I did backgrounds, I speed painted all of them in a week or two, all of the backgrounds using brushes that are great for concept art, such as textured rocks, buildings, grass, and other things. So even using someone else's tools for concept art helped me speed up my process for my own work. The next big factor that I really want to talk about also is budget, and that includes limitations and parameters. Budget plays a huge role in how you approach your work. Yes, you can argue that you do not need money to achieve quality work. You can technically do that for free, but guess what? Time is also budget. Let's say you were only given a week to finish a short film. You're going to utilize the best that you have to make that deadline. Budget can also refer to certain parameters or limitations or certain rules. So Let's say you were told you were not allowed to use dialogue or color for your film. By the way, this was a requirement for first year student films at CalArts back in the day, by the way. Or you could only use a certain number of drawings per shot. How many shot choices do you have? Or maybe you can only utilize one shot. The more you have rules to follow, limitations, a budget, the more you have to utilize your creativity and how to make it effective while still playing by those rules. And that's going to force some sort of innovation to come out of you. And also not only does, you know, working with a certain budget or limitations or parameters help improve your creativity and innovation skills, but it also gives you a sense of direction. Have you ever had a teacher that just gave you a really vague assignment and it was quite unclear and basically they just said, everything is up to you and you don't really know how to go about it. And by the way, I'm guilty of this to my students. You know, having certain rules gives you clear objectives to hit to finish a goal, what to do, what not to do, and it makes that finishing line much more clear to you. And like I said, working under a circumstance where there's a lot of budget, rules, and restrictions, it will breed some creative solutions for it. The last one I want to talk about is quite important, and it's based on reality. And it separates what needs to be done to how you want it to be done. Hear me out. Sometimes things feel too easy or laid back that it feels like it's cheating, bro. It goes against everything you were taught was right and considered true and hard laborious work. And there's people who are so sacred about the craft that they want to see their craft as something that's hard and attainable and only a few people can do it. And also I made a whole video talking about what is considered cheating in your art and my whole stance is that it's only cheating if you set certain rules for yourself. As long as it gets the job done, it gets the work done, it doesn't matter. As long as you're not committing plagiarism. That's it, that's my only stance. Otherwise, understand your own goals, budget, and your priority, and the shortcuts you can utilize to make your life easier. That's why there's newer software and approaches that are constantly made, that it consolidates the whole process into one. Things that were impossible to do years ago. There was even a stigma of artists using tablet only, digital only, and they thought that was cheating, but now this is considered the norm. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. So let's say you wanna make a short film where it's just jokes and you know, you ideally want the animation to be really fluid, like Disney Renaissance age level of fluidity, but you can't do that in like, let's say three days and you wanna get this short film done in three days. You can spend most of that time making that joke funny, making the beats hit and the animation maybe not as polished or maybe you make a rig and you know, face capture it through your webcam, mimic the motions, motion capture, whatever, and then just use that as your base animation. Even though you had to sacrifice the desire of having Disney quality-esque animation, you still hit that goal of making that joke land. Let's talk about drawing backgrounds, for example. You could build a very complex perspective scene by hand drawing grid lines, one point, two point, three point perspectives, make the draftsmanship gods proud, or you could just whip out something really quickly in Blender, apply a shader with tune shading or whatnot, and just use that as your base. Therefore, it removes all that laborious work of just drawing everything by hand. If you can, just reuse drawings from other shots or scenes and manipulate them in a way so they feel new and different. 
I think the important thing here is understanding your own goals and what you want to accomplish with it. Understand your circumstance and then understand what's important for you in this very moment and what can be second thought. If you constantly do things the painstaking way and only through that way, it's so much easier to get burned out by just someone utilizing more efficient and quicker methods to just get something done. If someone says whatever you're doing is or unimpressive, you know what, screw them. The important thing is you got something done. And not many people can say that, especially those who are sacred about working hard and long and laborious. There's a lot of things I could talk about regarding working smart and a lot of ideas and how to approach it. For this video, I just wanted to talk about factors that can help you lead towards a more smarter, not harder way of thinking about things. Because there's a lot of different methods to working smarter. There's a lot of shortcuts and solutions that one can find on their own. I have my way, you guys have your own way. But because I've worked on a few different pipelines, my own projects, my own short films, quick 48 hour films, I feel like these factors are universal for anyone who wants to be more interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end, have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.